Good morning, lovely to see everyone. Obviously, um, Gareth, lovely to have you back. I haven't seen you for a while. And Dale as well up there. Hi, lovely. Um, it's great to see you. Um, so this morning, um, it's, I'm not going to speak for too long. You might be celebrating this time. Um, but as we, as we've explained, we don't want this just to be a, a monologue from the stage. We don't think that is what church is about. So I know that's what we've been used to. However long we've come to church, that is what we're used to. We'll be, we come in, we sing a few songs, you listen to what somebody else has to say, hopefully meet with, meet with Jesus, and we go home. But as a church, we really want to change that to sort of a dialogue between us consistently as a church, because we want to value what you bring to the church. So it's not that you come and that the we who are really clever to speak at you and you go home. What we'd like to start doing is coming in, having conversations, like we've tried to do in the first few weeks this week, do testimonies. What has God been saying to you? What is God doing in your life? And more like a more community focused rather than me on this stage shouting it at you. So that is what we want, really, is our hearts really for this church. But today I'm just going to touch a bit on how to hit the hearing the voice of God. Um, for some of us, that is different for all of us. We will hear God in different ways. Um, but what I, what I plan to do is just to do a short you know, 10, 15 minute talk, and then we're actually going to try and do this practically. So I have sort of an application to do, a practical sort of uh, thing that we can do in small groups, hopefully, uh, if we have uh, time. But that is what my, our heart is today, is that we, we teach about it and then we do it. You know, our hearts is what Sam has been saying on the stage for the last three weeks, equipping you for service, equipping the saints for service. So up on here, our job, really on mine, Sam's, Noreen's, whoever's up here's job is to equip you to live out there better or more like Jesus than you would before. That's our heart, is to look like disciples of Jesus, is to become like Jesus, be with Jesus. That's the heart. So for us, it's just to try and support you and go, this might help. Have you thought about this tip? And then we're going to try and do it together and we can chat about it or we can come back each week. And that's why we're encouraging, what's God saying to you? How has God been moving in your life? Not necessarily just me at the front, but what about you? What's God been saying to you today? So I just want to really touch on how I, how do I hear the voice of God? Um, for me, it's mostly journaling. So I seem to get, a, I hear something, or I read a book, or I read the Bible, or I listen to a preacher, and I just write something in my journal. And then... It's sort of like I hear God speak to me back. As I'm writing, I sort of hear a voice. Normally something that's way too clever, sounding way too nice to be from me. I don't know if you've had that experience where God says something to you and you've been like, oh wow, that's good. And you think, that's definitely not my brain. <laughs> my mind couldn't have come up with that um, in exactly what you need in exactly the right moment. But now, so I just hear God, as I hear those, that sense, or if you read the Bible, if you read the Bible and you hear a word just hang, or a sentence sometimes hangs and sits in your spirit, sometimes that can just be God speaking to you about that passage. Um, I think when we speak about hearing God's voice, we sometimes imagine, you know, a big billboard saying, hi Simon, do this, or getting knocked over in some lightning or some fire in heaven like we read in the Bible. I think it's way sim more simple than that. It's way more day to day, daily, um, I was going to say mundane, but the, the things that he says aren't mundane, but it's not the normal day-to-day -day that God wants to speak to us in. And I think that's the, the encouragement we want this morning, is that we can find God in those different places. Um, and I just felt challenged this week that we shouldn't put God in a box of how to hear from him as well. So I've said that God speaks to me a lot through journal, but that's not the only way that God wants to speak to me. He might want to speak to us through you know, the, the nature. He might want to speak to us through a TV programme, through films or books or other people. It's, relationships are sometimes the main way that God speaks to us. It's through someone else. And I just want us to maybe get outside, break down the boundaries or the barriers to what we think, how God speaks, or when God speaks, or how. Because a lot of times maybe we feel like you've got, you hear something, in, maybe in your spirit, and you don't necessarily know, is that God? 
Is it not? I mean, sometimes then worry about whether we're doing the right things or what we're doing is in God's will. Um, so I really just wanted to share, maybe some, hear some experiences from you guys. How do you, is there any specific ways that you hear from God? Obviously, I said journaling for me, but is there any specific ways that you've learned over the time that God speaks to you? Uh, question and answer. This isn't a rhetorical question. Uh, if anyone has any answers, go on, Kat. This week, God spoke to me through a book that I was reading. Nice. You know, when I was reading, it was about um, what's your favourite dress? Yeah. <laughs> so, but He really spoke to me through it, you know, so it's right. it's the same for me. I think in every encounter. Yeah, what did you get from it? What did He say? Mm-hmm. If you want to share. So that was through a book that you were reading. Any other examples? How does anyone specific? We don't have, we don't have quite hands up. It's a nice teacher way of doing it. I feel like Nori would know better than I. We can have shout out as well. I'm not too strict. God speaks to me, right? <coughs> times he's got to put me low. Sometimes I'm ill. Mm. And when I'm ill, that's when God speaks to me. Wow. Right? Um, he, he shows me that, right, you're not going to be like this. You're going to be, you're going to be uh, healed. Mm. Right? And many times in my life, right, God has met me at my point of need. Um, uh, you know, but uh, that's the time when, when he speaks to me. There's different ways God can speak to us. Mm-hmm. Right? Through the Bible, when we, when we read the Bible, God imprints his, his words on my heart. Uh, uh, and I think that's most important. And how about the, um, maybe just explain to people about what we've talked about in terms of the spirit moving here in, the, in those pictures and things. Maybe just explain maybe how God's been speaking to you in that recently. Yeah, well, <clears throat> I was, uh, in July, it just came in July, I walked with God 57 years, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And uh, right from there, the thing is, right, it, it, I don't know whether you know my testimony or not, right, but I won't go through that again, but what I'm going to say is this, those of you that knew my testimony, a woman came to my house by mistake, okay? Mm-hmm. And uh, she came to my house, Right? And that's when I first heard the gospel. What a lot of people don't realize was two, two weeks before that, I buried my father. Mm. 
Right? So when I say God meets us at our, our point of need, yeah. that's exactly what happened there. Right. Right? This woman came with words of hope. Something I'd never heard before. I've been, I've been to church, I've been to, uh, I've been in a choir, but nothing ever happened. Right? That was only, that was only uh, a learning journey that I, I never knew. Right? But from that moment on, I think God was my heart, and I began to know Him. Right? And uh, then His prayer and reading the Word of God me go. Uh, and, and I would say to anyone, um, you know, read the word. And many, many Christians have given up yeah. in this pandemic because they've stopped reading the word. Mm -hmm. They stopped believing in God. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's something that we must do. We must read the word. We must read ourselves. Yeah. Mm. That's good. And that's, I guess, that's the primary way that he does speak to us, isn't it? It's through the word. Because that's it's his word. God breathed, so if you want sometimes to hear the voice of God, we can read it in here. Yeah, it's the primary, the primary way that He speaks to us. Um, but thank you, Roger. Yeah, so Roger was sharing with me as well uh, recently that he's, in the 57 years that Roger's been a Christian, he hasn't had pictures or visions. But what Roger was saying is that in the last year, since we've sort of been praying and connecting and maybe on spirit moves and growing in those gifts, that actually now. Roger said he does get pictures all the time and visions. And Roger was telling me in the week a picture that he had and a vision. And that, for me, that's amazing. That is showing that God can speak to us in different ways. Yeah. And I know Gareth is one of the most prophetic men I know. He gives us visions. And actually, a lot of the visions that Gareth has given us have been so influential. Um, Gareth gave us a vision years ago about throwing boxes out for people. Me and Sam didn't have a clue what that meant. We thought it was something different. We thought it might have been spiritual gifts to the people outside. And now we're starting a, a, a ministry where we give out boxes to people in the community. And that was something that we didn't even know two years, two years ago probably wasn't Gareth, maybe a long time ago. And that's hearing God's voice. And sometimes God's voice comes to us in a moment when we need it, as Rod said, when we need him most. Yeah. I know there's people in this room here today that need Jesus to speak to them today. And it is when we get to that thing where we can't do it on our own. I think that's and we need to get our posture day by day, but God, I need you today. I need you to speak to me today. I need to hear your voice today. Um, and I think that's a posture that we'll get. God wants to speak to us. God's not hiding behind. As Stephen Furtick says, God is always moving, but never hiding. When we're speaking to God, he's not running away from us. It's not a game to God that he goes, pray some more to me. Or pray in a different way. Pray in the right way, like my answer. God has always wants to speak to us. God is always available. And it's sometimes just about us getting out of the, um, in the position to hear God's voice. So that's the first really important I just want to touch on is Jesus tells us to go to the quiet place to hear from God. Uh, in Matthew 6, uh, verse 5 to 6, before Jesus lays out the Lord's Prayer, so when his disciples say to us, how, how do we pray? Lord, how can you show us? Can you tell us? Because we don't know how. And I think that's quite a real question for a lot of us sometimes. We don't know how to pray. But Jesus says, And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, that they may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your father who sees in secret will reward you. So what Jesus is saying is don't be like the hypocrites in those days going into the temples, shouting their prayers, trying to sound all amazing to everyone else. Jesus is actually going into the private place. And, and you see throughout the Bible, throughout Jesus' life, that's what he did. He went off to pray. It's the solitary place is to make time to meet with God. I think sometimes when some of them don't, if we don't hear from God, if we can't, if we feel miles away from God, it's probably just us that's gone somewhere, <laughs> not Jesus. He hasn't got, he's never gone anywhere. Throughout my life, I think every time I've been far away from God or I haven't heard him or I haven't been walking with him, well, it's because it's me. <laughs> I've gone far away or I've not been listening or I've not been connecting or I've, you know, I've not been putting the, the discipline that's self-control. To meet 
meet with <laughs> to meet with God. Um, so I think sometimes it is just us, maybe, to hear His voice. Um, but I really want to just touch on another story um, that Jesus meets um, us in the choir. So there's just another example in 1 Samuel 3. So this is Samuel, he's ministering, he's working in the temple uh, for Eli. And it says, Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord in the presence of Eli. And the word of the Lord was worth rare in those days. There was no frequent vision. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had, been, had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his own place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord said to call Samuel, and he said, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But Eli said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. And the Lord called again, Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son. Lie down again. Can imagine Eli getting a bit annoyed now we woke up in his sleep twice so far already. And now, now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. So this is Jesus, God speaking to Samuel, not never, he didn't have a relationship with God. It says, The Lord called Samuel again the third time, and he arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. And the Lord came and stood, calling as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant hears. Then the Lord said to Samuel. So God waited. So God waited for Samuel to respond before he spoke to him. He didn't say Samuel and then speak loads of things to him. He waited for Samuel to say, Lord, I'm here. I am listening, I'm available, before he then shared what he wanted to share. And I think God, God is patient in that way. God is so kind, God is so loving in the way that, you know, I know God's spoken to me about individual, specific things for years. And he keeps going and he keeps bringing it up. And every couple of months, he might say the same thing. But God is patient. If you see that, that's three times God said the same thing, calling out to Samuel. Um, so I think God is, is always speaking. It is sometimes just whether we are, we're listening or we're saying, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Um, and it had to be go lie down and stay in the choir. Um, but Sa Samuel is positioning himself to hear. I think that's basically the main thing that I wanted to share with you guys, positioning yourself to hear. Um, and, you know, we, see, we hear the story in 1, King, 1 Kings where, you know, Elijah, Elijah is waiting to hear from God, and he's, he's escaped, and God speaks to him, and Elijah says, you know, God wasn't, he looked at the lightning, but God wasn't in the lightning. He looked at the fire, and God wasn't in the fire. He looked at the wind, and God wasn't in the wind. But then came a gentle whisper, and that is where God spoke to Elijah, in the gentle whisper. I think God is kind to us in that way, that he won't, he doesn't, he doesn't shout, Sometimes he does, but he, he, he doesn't, like, knock doors down to get our attention. Sometimes, in, in ways, individual ways I have, but often it is like what Roger said, when you get to a point where you need God, or you hear people who've never even met God just cry out, maybe in a prison cell, and say, God, I need you. And he leads them. Then he leads them. Because it's about the open um, heart to hearing from God. So, yeah, some, you know, God speaks in the choir and it's up to us to listen. But, what, but based, all I want to sort of explain is what is this listening for? Why do we want to hear from God? And that's why as a church, for us, it's the practical element to go out there and bring the kingdom of God outside of these four walls. You know, that's why we want to equip you. How do you hear from God? Oh, well, here's some better ways, maybe. And here's how I've learned to do it. Find out more about you and your specific ways. To go out there and bring Jesus to other people. So when you're in your job in a difficult situation, you say, Holy Spirit, help me. You can hear him better to help you. When someone asks you about Jesus, 
Holy Spirit, give me a great burden. And then you hear what he says and you speak it out. It's not about doing it really for our benefit always. It's actually to help us go out and change the, the valleys, change, bring Jesus to this kingdom, you know, to bring kingdom on, you know, from heaven to earth. And that, we need to listen to God for that. We need to be hearing what God's saying in our specific areas. You know, it, it's about hearing God in the day to day. There's an amazing quote. Um, I was really moved by this quote. It really challenged me. Um, it's by a Franciscan priest called Brennan Manning. And he's talking about, um, so when Jesus goes off to pray, and he's talking about that time that we spend daily with Jesus. And it's not about ticking off that day. It's not going, God, I've given you an hour. But what he says is, what if the hour that you spend in the prayer room is when you refocus on Jesus so that you can carry his presence with you in the other 23 hours of the day? with a heightened awareness that he is with you, he is for you, that he likes you, and that he hears your thoughts. Maybe that's something for somebody today, that he likes you. I feel like I was saying something today. You know, he, God likes you, God loves you. God likes spending time with you, not because he has to. It says you start to pray in real time. You instinctively lift situations to the Lord. In the actual moment that you experience them, while you are watching that distressing news report or hearing about your friend's latest crisis, you're no longer deferring all your prayers to some later holier moment because your whole life is becoming that holier moment. So what he's saying is the prayer that we spend in that hour, say 10 minutes, 5 minutes, whatever it is that you give God in that morning slot that we like to do, is actually to help us for the rest of the time to live with a, an awareness of the Holy Spirit. To hear God, so we don't just hear God in that five minutes, that we learn to hear his voice and identify the way that he moves in our lives specifically, because the way that Roger will hear from God will be completely different to the way that I hear from God, and the way that Dave does, and the way that Martin does. It'll be completely different. So the, when we spend time with Jesus, we understand how he speaks to us. Oh yeah, actually God does speak to me. God speaks to me in sunsets. I look at a sunset and I'm like, every time I just want to worship Jesus. And that sets me back and goes, wow, Jesus, you created that. You know, the Bible says he created it for our enjoyment, he created the world as well. <laughs> I mean, that is, yeah. It's just not about spending an hour with God and spending time with God. Yes, that's great. It's actually to spend the rest of the time and to be aware of Jesus. Because life isn't easy. Hearing from God isn't always easy. God, where are you in this crisis? Where are you to look after my kids? Where In my job, that is the biggest sphere of influence that any of us have. You know, my job is here with you guys to help you go out and influence and change the world, the culture in your jobs. That's what we want church to be. As Sam said last week, a springboard. Learning here, getting out there. Change the world. It's not about coming to our services. It's not about being holy because we go to loads of meetings. I would rather us hearing God, being in the pub, changing one of our friends' lives, bringing the gospel to them, rather than being here. That's what we wanted, to be a training ground for us to go, actually, I struggle to hear God's voice. Actually, I don't know how. Actually, I've, I've never really heard God speak. The honest conversations that we can have as a group, just to finish. Um, so just to really point quickly, probably gone way too far over than I wanted to. Um, I'm going to have something to stop me. I think I've got that hand up. Like, school, there's no school bell nor to save me. Um, so speaking, so hearing God's voice and speaking it for others is prophecy. So when we're saying what is a prophetic word, it is I've heard what God has said and I've said it and I've spoken it out. So that is in its simplest terms. So a gift of prophecy so a lot of some you might hear people say, oh, I'm a prophet, I hear from God. But actually prophecy is more of just a word in the moment. So we, I, I, wouldn't necessarily, I wouldn't necessarily say, oh, I'm a prophet. But God gives me that, graces me in those moments, in that instant. He speaks to me on behalf of someone because that's because he wants to share with that person. So in that moment, he gives Gareth the gift of prophecy to see that vision. You know, in that moment, he gives us the gift of encouragement, the gift of wisdom. All those, all those different things, they're, they're gifts. As John Wimber calls them, he calls them graceless, because 
they're get spiritual get graces because they're given to us by God in the moment. Because once we think it's about that, it's once we think I've got a gift, we we go well. Once I'm a prophet, you know, not when God gives me the gift of prophecy whenever He wants to speak. It's being that open. You know, the truth of what God says affects your prophecy. So when you read something in the Bible that speaks truth, that is prophetic word because you're hearing God because the Bible is truth. That's the simple way. That's why God says, listen to your Bible, read your Bibles because it's God's truth in however many pages. But just a point really just on, before we go into some, maybe something practical or maybe comes up um, and plays again for us. But the words of God, so prophetic words build up, encourage and strengthen. 1 Corinthians 14, 3 says, The one who prophesies speaks to people for the upbuilding and encouragement and consolation. And 1 Corinthians 12, 7 says, The gifts of the Spirit are given for the common good. So any gift that you have from Jesus, anytime you hear the voice of God, it's for somebody else's good. It's for building up. And that's why some people, a lot of people say, you know, when you're hearing God's voice, stay away. When you're speaking to somebody else about it, stay away from marriages, death, children, <laughs> three off the cards things that you say to people, you know, about having kids, uh, getting married, meeting someone, dying, you know, but if it encourages, and just encourage you to hear God, if someone says a prophetic word to you, test it, the Bible says, test what people say, we're all humans, we're going to hear God's voice imperfectly probably, we're going to say something with, with motives, but that's what the church is about, we build each other up. Libby, I said, I've been hearing from God this week that you are this, this, and this. Build it up. I wish you would have given me one of that man in the list. That would be amazing. But you didn't. <laughs> yeah, so if it doesn't say it, the Bible says just test them. So I want to encourage us you know, to hear God's voice and to share it with people. If you, to be bold, to say, I feel like God is saying this. And the best way to say it is, maybe humbly, is to go, I might be wrong. I might be wrong, Lord, but God, God really wants to strengthen strength, and that's what I heard that strength but I may be wrong, God might not have said this, but <laughs> try it, uh, I, I don't know if this is wrong, but, I think that's just what the encouragement is today you can test them with God and go God, was that right what they said because sometimes, I don't know about you, but being in the church, we have broken people who sometimes give broken prophecies oh, that didn't sit very well with me what that person said find a trusted person, do you think that's right, really what, right what they said to me does that sound good to you? Test that with someone, test it with God. God, does that sit? Can I throw that away? <laughs> Don't allow things. You know, it's supposed to be encouragement and build up. So if it makes you feel um, a bit uncomfortable or in the spirit, I'll just test it. Not saying you're not going to be out of your comfort zone when someone gives you maybe a, could be a, you know, I don't know, encouragement, it could be a challenge, it could be a bit, yeah. mm. it's not about not being challenged and feeling uncomfortable, but it's just testing those words. prayer outward, it makes hearing from God a bit more outward focused. What happens if we're in, in our school, if wherever you are in work, and you say, God, give me a, a, a word of knowledge for that person. Give me a way to encourage me to right now. And just have that, as that Brendan Manning said, it's that heightened awareness of the Holy Spirit for the 20, over 23 hours of the day. Holy Spirit, what are you saying right now about this situation? Help me, and it's real time. I think that's really what it is, is hearing God's voice as we go, not just getting those big moments where I've fallen on the floor in a meeting, but it's that day by day, um, the minute by minute. So I think just Millie, as Millie plays, because as Millie plays, the Holy Spirit always comes. Um, so if we just play, let's have just have time. Let's have a time. Let's allow the Holy Spirit to do what He wants. This mic is here. Come up. If you feel that God's saying something to someone, let's be bold. 
let's be courageous because God does not just speak to me. I know he speaks to a lot of other people in this room, but a lot more he does to me. Just if you feel like God's here. And actually sometimes, sorry, I'm speaking a lot. But sometimes it's actively saying, God, what are you saying to this person? Please give me a vision. And I know that's new for people, and sometimes people don't get words. But let's ask God. Let's be bold. You know, as an encouragement, I once told Laura, God give me a vision of a spud gun. And I was very worried that I was absolutely mad. But Laura, it was a memory for Laura that she used to play this spud gun when she was a kid. And, and just in that moment, God wanted to remind me that I'd speak to her about that. But it's getting out of your comfort zone and trusting the Lord. I may be wrong, but I may not have heard this properly. But. So let's just wait as the Holy Spirit will just come.